Welcome to our video series, Introduction to Surf Fishing. I meet so many clients and ladies and different people all the time who tell me that they have either tried surf fishing before and they're not having any, any success with it, or maybe they do fly fishing or freshwater fishing inshore. They really don't know too much about surf fishing because it's really very different from other types of fishing. So if that's you, this series is for you. If you're more experienced, you might find this information to be pretty basic, and that's because that's our intention, to make it nice and basic and simple for those who are just getting started with surf fishing. A few years ago, I made this whole course introduction to surf fishing for our private ladies community. Now we feel like we want to release this information to the public, so we're putting this into a series. This is part one today. We got part two and part three coming soon. We're going to talk today about what is surf fishing? Why are so many people wanting to learn surf fishing? There's been a huge rush over the last few years to surf fishing. And we're also going to take a look at the cost factors of how expensive surf fishing can be for you. Like I said, this information is geared toward women, but the knowledge is for everyone. So if you're finding that it's helpful, leave a comment, push a like, go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel yet. If you live in or you'll be anywhere near St. Augustine all the way down through New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and you want to get a jump start on your surf fishing knowledge and experience, nothing replaces that hands-on learning as you're right there on the beach. Go to fishing-girl.com or my phone number is there. You can text or call and we'll set up a time, set up a booking, and I would love to get you out there, show you how much fun it is to catch fish on the beach. But right now, let's get into this video, part one of Introduction to Surf Fishing. So what is surf fishing? Why is it such a big deal? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Surf fishing is basically what the name of the title is. It's fishing from the surf. It's land-based fishing. You're fishing on the beach with your feet planted on the shore, casting a line into the water, into the ocean, just like I've done here. I've got two lines out. We're on the land and we're casting into the ocean. That is surf fishing in its most basic form. So what is the big deal about surf fishing? That's what we're gonna talk about right now. So the first reason that I think surf fishing is so wonderful is just, it's the beach. <laughs> I mean, I don't know too many women who don't love the beach. Even if you're out here and it's like the other day I was out on the pier, you know, it's still near the beach, overlooking the ocean, didn't catch a single thing. It was okay because I'm at the beach. It's, it's just beautiful. So I, it's one of the few things that I can do personally where if I've had a stressful day, if I've got a stressful situation that I'm dealing with, I can go to the beach and I can put a line in the water or two or three <laughs> and I don't have to worry about anything else. All of the worries, all of the problems seem to just disappear for those two or three hours that I'm out there because it's just such a beautiful place to be. The, the sound of the ocean is relaxing and it helps you just de-stress. De At the same time, you could be catching fish and it's so much fun. So another reason that I think surf fishing is so much fun and why it's gained so much popularity lately is because the beach is a popular vacation spot and surf fishing is something that you can do with your families. I have people that I know who they, they wait for a long time to go on vacation and they watch videos and they get their gear ready and they're just so pumped to go surf fishing that, that one or two times a year that they get to go vacation with their family and surf fishing is one of the things that they can do while they're sitting out on the beach. You can have your, your kids and your family swimming nearby, not right where your poles are, because <laughs> that would be bad, scaring all the fish away. But you can be enjoying the beach together with your family while you're surf fishing. The great thing that I think makes surf fishing so much fun and so addictive is the thing that everyone says, the tug is the drug. There is nothing like the feeling of having that fish on the other end of your line tugging away and you're reeling it in and you're fighting that fish and you successfully land it. It's such an exciting thing and it's so much fun. So the tug is definitely the drug. Another reason I think surf fishing is so wonderful, especially right now in our economy and what we're going through, 
is that most of the fish that you're going to catch from the beach are fish that you can eat. Even fish that other people have told me are trash fish, I have cooked up and my whole family has enjoyed them. Uh, bluefish. I have friends who eat saltwater catfish and they love it. I have several friends that I know who do that. So those fish are like considered to be trash fish. Now granted there are fish that really like ladyfish you got to do special things to them because their 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 meat is kind of mushy. So, they're but you can still eat them. They're still usable. People use them for bait for larger fish, which those fish are like amazing tasting fish. So, so you might be wondering how much does it cost to do surf fishing, to do it effectively and catch fish. I'll tell you that it is as expensive as you want to make it. Honestly, when I first started, I didn't know anything about rods and reels and all of these different things that I've learned over the last few years. I went to Bass Pro Shop. I got a um, Pen Battle 3 with a 5,000 reel is what they recommended. It was a couple hundred bucks, um, more than what I wanted to spend at the time, but they told me it was a good quality reel. It was going to hold up and it was sealed for salt water, which is true. It's a great, it's a great reel. I still have it on this rod in the middle here. But you know what? I discovered that the Walmart pole that I got for $25, $35 was producing just as many fish as the other one. Now, if you're wanting heavy duty fish, if you're gonna be targeting redfish, flounder, snook, sea trout, some of those really uh, heavier fish, you're gonna wanna have something that can hold up better. So what do you need to get started? Really, you need a rod and reel. We talked about that, you can get set up with a $35 combo to check out and make sure that it's something you really love doing. Get yourself a couple rigs. You can either buy them, you can uh, make them yourself. You'll need a sinker. I would suggest if you're on the Gulf Coast, you can get away with a pyramid sinker. If it's on a, a very calm day, pyramid sinkers are okay here on the East Coast, but I would recommend a Sputnik sinker. So you really don't have to start expensive. You can tailor it to whatever you want to do, but you really can start out pretty cheaply and get some fish here in the surf. So when you come out to the beach and you see people fishing, you'll probably see people like me who've got three or four rods in the water and you go, whoa, I can't compete with that. I have to have all these poles. No, you don't have to start out that way. You can start out with one rod. I started out with one fishing pole and then I worked up from there because you need to be able to man all of the ones that you have out in the water effectively. There's times where I only have two of them in the water. I may have four with me, but I only have two in the water because I can't keep track of all of them at once. So I have to make sure that I can manage the ones that I have in the water. So until you decide if surf fishing is really something that you love, something that you want to do, I would just stick with keeping it simple, one line, one, one rod and reel, um, get some basic tackle. You can get a very inexpensive tackle box and other things like that cheaply and just a couple of rigs, a couple of sinkers and test it out, see if you like it. So someone I knew dumped a lot of money into surf fishing before they really understood, really knew what they were getting into, bought expensive rods and reels. They, they had multiple, they had the cart, they had all of these things and probably put thousands of dollars into this before they ever stepped out onto the beach. And I would say, don't do that because what happened, this particular person started surf fishing and as much as they enjoyed it, they had physical problems with being out on the beach. It was very taxing on their body. They were disabled. So standing on the sand for hours really would mess them up. They, they would have to recover for days, even up to a week or more, just from one fishing trip, and soon discovered that they, they were not going to be able to continue surf fishing. So they ended up selling all of their stuff and probably lost a lot of money in the process. So don't make that mistake. I would say start out simple. Make sure that it's for the surf. I've got this rod over here. I don't know if you can see this turquoise one. Talked about it in some other videos. And that was only $35 at Walmart. It's a nine foot pole. Perfect for starting out. And especially perfect, I think, for a woman starting out in surf fishing to see if you really like it. 
Thank you so much for watching part one of our course, Introduction to Surf Fishing. I hope you learned something. I hope it was helpful. If it was, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, and let us know if it's been helping you. Stay tuned over the next few weeks. We're going to have a lot more information coming to you. We're going to talk about fish identification. We're going to talk about regulations. We're going to show you different types of fish that you can catch, typically so that when you're pulling those in, you know exactly what kind of fish you have on the line and you know those regulations to start with. You don't have to go flipping and looking it up. We're gonna show you what to wear while you're on the beach. And we're gonna talk about how to stay safe, especially as women. We're gonna talk about being safe on the beach, not just from people, but also from all the other critters that you can either catch or that you might encounter. But check out our website, fishing-girl.com. We've got awesome products there for sale. We've got our own Fish and Girl Sputniks. We've got float rigs, we've got pompano rigs. We've got earrings, ladies. We got t-shirts. We've got all kind of stuff for you to, uh, to have fun out there fishing and catch the fish. Everyone who's bought our float rigs turns around and buys more because they really like how they work. So check that out. And if you're new to surf fishing, you wanna get a jump start on your learning. Like I said earlier, let's book a charter. Let's get out, let's go fishing. Uh, go to fishing-girl.com, click on the charters tab and let's get you scheduled and out there. But as always, tight lines. God bless, and we'll see you. But right now, let's get into this video, part one, uh, what are the <laughs> but right now let's get into this video part one introduction to surf fishing I still didn't say it right